millions of years before humans. So that argument doesn't work. So that's problem number one. Problem number two yeah. is that um, not only is there a lot of animal suffering before any fall event, yeah. but also the suffering seems to be interrelated to how humans actually got here. Okay. Right? So had the dinosaurs not been wiped out, yeah. we probably wouldn't be here. Yeah, they, right? they probably eat us. <laughs> yeah. So, so the point is the, dino, the dinosaur extinction is only one of like five mass extinctions. Okay. Yeah. And that seems to be like the, and also we have evolution. Evolution is also a very violent process. So, you know, if you're not fit enough, you know, you're going to get eaten or you're going to starve to death or die of disease. It's a very, very violent process. Which was some atheists followed, like uh, communists, to get rid of a lot of people because they believe it's the survival of the fittest. Uh, the, what's it called? Eugenics. So, so well, atheists I, did use the, the evolutionary process to talk about, you know, people born with disabilities, etc. That, you know, they should be well, getting they, rid they, of. They, that's nothing to do with atheism. There may be certain atheists that were eugenic. Gen Genesis, that's true. Yeah. But I, there's nothing in atheism that says you should be a eugenicist. That's how nature is. It's not necessarily... But evolution... There's not, that's, that's what, not... Yeah, yeah, but you don't... Look, let's put it this way. I like going skydiving. If I fall from a great height yeah. without a parachute, yeah. I'm going to die. Yes, that's your That fault. doesn't mean I shouldn't wear a parachute. Well, exactly, <laughs> right? exactly. It, it, there's a diff what, describing how nature is is very different to saying how things should be. Okay, so, yes. so it's certainly true that this is how nature operates. And this yes. is the problem, because if God is behind it, yes. he's, he's getting to us via a really violent process. Mm -hmm. And that does not seem consistent with a perfectly good God. Why would he use such violent means? Yeah. Like the dinosaur extinction was just the worst nightmare you can ever imagine, right? Like, imagine the skies darkening, all the food sources drying up. I mean, you know, just gradually every species around you dying slowly of starvation. Mm. I mean, this is how we got here, okay. right? So the engine of our creation is very, very violent. Mm. And so either God is behind it, in which case he can't be all good, or he wasn't behind it, in which case, you know, it how exist. is he, he does it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Third problem is why, you know, we, we're getting a, a mass extinction event happening now. So we've yeah. had five mass extinctions, okay. right? There's the Permian, you know, the Cretaceous, various mass extinctions. But there's a new mass extinction happening called the Anthropocene, okay. where we're seeing an extremely high rate of extinction of animals, mostly driven by human activity. Like bees. Sorry? Bees. Bees I may go, see, I don't know what their uh, status is at the moment, but there's certainly, yeah. there are problems with bee yeah. populations, sure. Um, but, um, and it's mainly driven by human consumption of animals, right? So now God, if he's all powerful and he can see the future, yeah. he would know this was going to happen. He could have just stopped it by making us all vegetarians, but he didn't. And in fact, in many religious traditions, he encourages us to eat meat, yeah. creating this mass extinction event. It's all just all from suffering. Okay, so a uh, fourth problem is animal instincts. So animals do have instincts to um, back off from fires, right? But there are other things they don't have instincts of. So there's something called a predator trap. Okay. So a predator trap is um, where you have like a tar pit. And What's a tar pit? A tar pit, let, let's say um, an area where there's a lot of viscous material where okay. an animal gets stuck in it. Oh, okay, okay. So imagine like a muddy yeah. material, yes, something yes, like yes, that. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So it's a very famous example is in California, they have something called the La Brea Tar Pits. Okay. They found the remains of 4,000 wolves there. Oh, wow. And what happened, it was, the, the predator goes, it, there's maybe an animal stuck in the tar pit. Mm -hmm. The predator comes along and goes, oh, easy meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That animal can't move. So they go in, mm. and guess what happens? They, they get stuck. They end up and then, another, then the other, other ones come in, yeah. and they get stuck. And they found the remains of like 4,000. Wow. All God had to do was just give them an instinct just think of it, you're stuck, dying slowly of starvation. Mm. All God had to do was give him an instinct to avoid predator traps, just like he gave him an instinct to avoid fire, because they do have instincts okay. to avoid fire. Yes. But they don't have instincts to avoid predator traps. So why not? You know, I mean, it just okay. seems like... Um, and also in other religious traditions, not, again, not necessarily in the Quran, but yeah. in the Bible there are certainly... I mean, well, it depends what your view is. The, the Quran does mention the flood, right? Mm. The flood in the Bible, certainly, yeah. God says he's due to the wickedness of man, but yet he drowns like almost all the animals on the planet. Okay. That seems to be extremely cruel, okay. right? And and the Bible, the Quran does actually mention the flood. Now it doesn't describe it in the detail. Yeah. So, okay, there's some subtlety there. Yeah. But I mean, whatever your view on the flood is, yeah. point is, uh, 
you know, animal suffering, I think, uh, is a very powerful argument against the existence of an all-powerful, all-good God. Okay, I thought, I thought you would main, mainly talk about human suffering. But you, no, went, you went to animal I'm suffering. I was going to animals because there okay. are theodicies yeah. that is, theologians have tried to develop. And yeah. they are, but the problem is they are more specific to human suffering. But when you bring animals into the mix, yeah. a lot of those theodicies fail, I think. Well, the thing yeah. is, with animals, animals act on instinct. Uh, yes, we are, we, yes, we obviously slaughter them to eat them. Yeah. But there's also, even if we didn't exist, there'll be animals slaughtering, suffering by other animals and other predators. So that's not going to take it out of the picture. So just because that doesn't take that out of the picture, neither does it mean that just because animals suffer, therefore God doesn't exist, is not an argument to me. Because all you're doing is, to me, it seems like you are going out your way mm -hmm. to just debunk the whole, like, I mean, look, it's just your right, you know, so just not to, it just seems like you do not want to believe in God and you're looking for new arguments uh, to, dis to use against it. So to me, let's suppose we go with the argument, we don't believe God, like, we believe God Almighty is the most merciful, He's the all-knowing, He's the most wise. So we don't go with this notion of the Christians of God is just all good in what context do we mean by that? We, what we say is, for example, that God Almighty has created us and He has wisdom. So there is things that He knows that we don't know. So we know from our traditions that in the Quran, when God Almighty, the angels that He created, when He created mankind, the angels actually said to God Almighty, why do you create humans knowing that they're going to cause corruption in the land? You know, and God Almighty says, I know what you, what you don't know. So we need to understand that we're dealing with a power that, you know the new, the, was it James Telescope, what was it? The, James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah, have you telescope. seen that telescope yeah. which took the picture of the entire universe? If God in it Almighty... Did, it didn't take a picture of the whole universe. No, 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 it no, took no, a sorry, picture sorry, of sorry. a whole bunch of galaxies. Yes, yeah. exactly, galaxies, yeah? And there are billions and trillions of galaxies within our universe. That's right. So that's just one element here. To me, that shows how supreme and magnificent God is. So with this in mind, which we have other arguments to prove God Almighty exists, which is a different topic. Let's stick to this topic. Yeah. I wouldn't negate God doesn't exist because of a certain suffering that I don't understand. Because we look at that and we perceive it. So when, it, when an animal is getting its neck, you know, slot, like, cut off, to us, we look at that and be like, oh my gosh, that's horrific. Even though the Islamic protocol to go about that is not what these factories do. Mm -hmm. Number one, you should move the animal from other animals' view of it being slaughtered. Number two, you should hide, cover its eyes so it doesn't see the knife. And number three, we are told to sharpen our knife, which might be like, well, hold on a second, sharpen your knife. Well, to, we believe to lessen the suffering. Efficiency. So, efficiency. And also, we believe like, you know, the moment the blood stops going to the brain, you pass out. So Islam deals with it in a, we believe in a humane way, uh, which you might disagree with. But again, the suffering of the animal does not negate God's existence. All it does is shows our lack of comprehension and understanding. I am not going to negate God because of something I don't understand. There are sufferings that I went through in my life. A lot of sufferings actually. And so I, those sufferings that made me who I am. Like you speak to these entrepreneurs. Mm. I had to go through this and my mom kicked me out of my house and I had to go and eat baked beans and chips for two months and da 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 And now I'm a multi-millionaire, uh, sign up to my course. Yeah? They, and if you think about it, they all talk about their suffering, suffering, and they talk about what their suffering done to them to reach where they are. So we can say that as a success story, but he had to go through some suffering. I understand you can come and say, well, what success story does a sheep go through when it gets slaughtered? Well, the yes. point, yeah, exactly, that was be, exactly. That was exactly. going to be my point. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, ahead yeah, of you, mate, I'm ahead of you. <laughs> yeah? So the thing what I'm trying to say is though, when it right. comes to that, I see it as this. I don't understand what's going on there. It looks gruesome. Yeah. However, I do have evidence to believe that God Almighty exists and I have trust in him because trust and relationship is very important. Through, like, do you have kids? No. Okay, I have two daughters, yeah? My daughters would trust me. If I said, look, jump, I'm gonna hold you. If they have some level of trust, they would jump and I would, because it's a trust relationship. Right. So with God Almighty, we have something called tawakkul in Islam, which is having that trust in God Almighty that I know what I earn is meant for me. So argument sake, if I open a, let's say a, a store that sells suits, yeah, and I sell suits. If I had 10 more stores open next to me which sell suits, as a Muslim, I don't give a damn. Because I believe that what God has written to me for my income is going to reach me regardless if there's 10 or 20 competitors. So we have that trust. So just to touch up on it, if I see an animal suffering or it looks like that, it doesn't negate God for me. It's not an argument that God doesn't exist. Number two, I have trust that God knows better and what I perceive to be really harmful might be the best way of Putting an end to that creature's okay, life. Okay, so let me, yeah, okay. Fair, and that's okay, a number three, you. if I may, after. After. Okay. after. Yeah. All right, so um, you made a couple of points. So, first one was um, 
that basically, we're basically running a sort of skeptical theist position, it seems to me. So that, for those that don't know, that's basically saying, well, God may have a good reason and I don't know what it is. That's, yes. That's yes, basically yes, what you're yes, arguing, if, I, yes. if I've understood you correctly. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the problem with that is, um, yeah, it's certainly true that when you see something bad, God might have a good reason for yeah. it, right? That could be true. Yes. The problem is, you could reverse the argument. Everything good you see, there might be a hidden... So for every hidden... Uh, for every something apparently bad, there could be a hidden good. This is called the hidden goods argument, yes. right? And that's what you're right. Yes. The problem with that is, for everything uh, good you see, there could be a hidden bad. Yeah, that's so, what Allah says so, in the Quran. Right, you so, might hate something which is good for you, and you might love something which is bad for you. So we agree right, with right, that. The point is, yeah. if, you, if you praise God for something that appears to be good, yes. the problem is, it might be only an apparent goodness. It, it be. could be. So, for example, it's certainly true that if you saw, you know, a child drowning, yeah. right? You might say, well, I'm going to rescue the child, right? Because it seems to be a good thing to do. Yes. But maybe you could always imagine yeah. that actually that child's going to be the next Hitler. Well, and you well, shouldn't well, we have that story, Khidr. Oh, I know, I know. That's, yes. that's not the point I'm making, though. Yeah. I know the stories in the Quran, but yeah. the, my point is Similar story. that... that, um, that you, you, you can't praise God for apparent good things it, on this basis because the problem is if you're saying we don't know the real state of the world, what God's intentions are, yeah. he could have bad intentions. No, he can't. Right? We, we, we negate that to God. We can't well, think God would have bad intentions. You, but why, then it seems like a circular argument. You're just assuming God is good and therefore anything you see you're going to presume then, well, God is good. He must have a good reason because God is good. Yes, yes. But the problem is we we're trying to. to debate intellectually whether God is good. No, but this is... Right? This is and like, if you're going to dismiss every single piece of evidence that says God is not good because you're starting off with an assumption that God is good, yes. then you, you just have a circular argument, don't you? It can be, but we're talking about the supernatural. You're talking about what we see, touch, feel, taste, smell, hear um, and uh, smell. So you're working on that paradigm. But so are you we, because you no, look at the world. not necessarily. Okay. No, okay. I, work, I work on it from a, parano uh, a, a supernatural reality that I believe in. So it might be circular what you say, but I, if I believe God Almighty is firstly exists, if I have evidence for his existence, number two, if he exists, he has to have certain attributes. If those attributes is that he's most merciful, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, and he's all-wise, uh, then I have to get those, know those attributes and apply it to this life where there's certain things that I may never understand. Just as a child is running to the fire and I'm in the instant reaction, kick my child, and he's like, Dad is evil. No, Dad just saved your life. So the thing is that child might not comprehend and understand and say, Dad, I ascribe evilness to Dad. But you don't understand Dad just saved your life. Yeah, but mm. from what I comprehend, you, you... what I comprehend, the child will say, You did you kick me? Yes, I did. You're evil. No, hold on a second. I say, No, did you kick me? I equate kicking with evilness. This is what you're Right, but the, 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 there are also parents that abuse their children, right? But I'm not talking about that. Let's right, 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 but the problem is we're trying to decide <laughs> yes. which it is. And in yes. order to decide which it is, we have to look at the evidence. Yes. Right? So you can't just say, well, look, I say God is, is good, yeah. therefore, therefore if, he, if it appears to be bad what he does, yes. it can't really be bad because I'm going to assume God is good. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is we have to try and ascertain when you say you're looking at the supernatural and i'm yes. looking at the natural yes. the problem is you infer god yes. exists from yes. presumably the world that you observe no, no there's right? i have evidence it's about a different story we don't want to get yeah, but, into that. okay but whatever yeah. evidence you have yeah. for god yeah. you you have to draw that from your experience from your perception of the world and no so not on. really I've, i i use all logical arguments yeah but even your logical arguments have to have some any any logical argument yeah. has to start have a, 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 a assumption right a premise yes yes yeah so that premise you have to check against yeah. your experience, yeah. your knowledge, yeah. what you see and so on. Yeah. Right? So I'm just doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. Right? I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm saying, well look, my experience of the world, my perception is that animals suffer unnecessarily. Right? So, 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 so can, can they suffer unnecessarily? No, so for example, if you're saying your okay. argument is that it can, they suffer unnecessarily, if there are five people who are starving and they kill a sheep, was that action act, act of uh, evil or Five people, no, that, were, fed, that, that, you know, five if, people if, were fed from that and they, and right, they had right. any... Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, wait, wait, so, so, but there are clear cases where that's not the case, right? So, for example... Um, the example you brought up earlier... Yeah, yeah, the examples I brought up earlier, that doesn't apply to what you said. So the animal dying in the tar pit, yes. no, no one fed off it. No, no, right? no, no, that's fine. But they, they're, they're they're just they just die. Every animal that tries to feed off it dies of starvation, stuck That happens in, in a different third world countries. So that is, it happens to humans and children and babies. Right, so that doesn't... How does that help your argument? No, that just makes it worse, No, because right? the thing is... more suffering. Because your paradigm is based on this life. 
Because of this life, when you go to a person who's born with disability and no legs, you have nothing to offer them except evolution chose you to be like this. We as religious people would come and say, we believe in a hereafter. Yes, you might come and say, okay, it's a false perception or a false reality, whatever you want to call it. We believe that our belief system transcends this life. You are left, all you're doing is with the five senses and you operate. I understand where you're coming from. From your paradigm, I don't blame you. You're exactly what you're saying. If I was in your position, I'd be saying exactly the same thing. We transcend the transcend those five um, things that we have. Yeah. Okay. Those senses. Senses. senses, senses yeah? yeah. So what I'm saying is, because we transcend that, we're talking. We're talking over each other, past but, each other. Well, yeah? well, okay. But what, what I'm saying, saying is, is that yeah. you, you. It's not. It's. We're not really talking past each other because we are. Well, I know you think we are, but I'm trying to argue that we're not. Okay. And the reason I say we're not is because I know what you're saying. You're saying. Well, God is supernatural, so therefore yes. I'm going to appeal to a supernatural realm. Yes. But the problem is, in order to ascertain whether that supernatural being exists, yes. you have to have certain arguments, right? We're not yeah. going to go into yeah, all the but different we have arguments, that. right? We've done that yeah, before, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. The point is, those arguments, they have to reference the world that exists. So whether you're going to say oh, you read the fine. Quran and the Quran is a miracle document, yes. whether you say... Uh, it's the design in nature. Yeah, no problem. Whether, whether, whatever you, whatever yeah. reason you come up with, yeah. right? You are you are getting your input information yes. from your senses. Okay, right? yeah, we're using our yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah, we're not really doing a different thing. We're really no, doing no, the no. same thing. No, no, we are. Yeah? But we're, ba we're both using input information from how we perceive the world, yeah. and we're drawing a conclusion. The, what I think the difference is is that you've closed yourself off to the evidence. Because no. you're saying, well, whatever bad thing I perceive, I'm just going to ignore it because God must have a good reason, because God is good. Mm -hmm. But if you just say, well, look, I don't know whether God is good. I'm going to be open-minded. No. Maybe God is good. Maybe no, God is your, not good. Your evidence. Right? And then I'm going to look at the evidence and try and decide whether God is good or whether God is not good. And the yeah. evidence to me shows that God is not yeah, good. Yeah, about 20 if he exists. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, to me, it seems Sorry. like... Um, the, the actual conversation here is about differences of, on how we understand cosmology. So you have a particular way of how you understand cosmology, and we have a particular way on how we understand cosmology. And I think that's what Ali was saying, is that, for example, you are defining as suffering yeah. and death yeah. as evil, ultimately. Well, I, I, don't, I don't like to use the word evil, actually. I'm just saying suffering is something yeah. that is inconsistent with an all... The, or the suffering that yeah. we see, I should say, yeah. uh, is inconsistent with an all-powerful, all-good God. And the reason why you're saying yeah. that is because yeah. you're viewing suffering as something negative. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, right? sure. That's, yeah. that's what I'm Yeah, yeah, that, that's, now, fine. that's fine. But, yeah. but yeah. I'm saying yeah. the cosmology that we, and, and that we operate in, yeah. death, suffering, all these things are not the end state of the very thing that you're talking about. We believe okay. that... You believe in an afterlife? Yeah, there's something yeah, beyond... Okay, okay. But but let's, just, let's just grant there's an afterlife, hypothetically. Okay? And, and, and right? So let's just say, fine, there's an afterlife. I don't know how yeah. that works as an argument to counter what I'm saying. So let's it say does. that, that, that animals are compensated in the afterlife. Yeah. Let's yeah. Say, yeah. Right? The you problem with the well. compensation argument yeah. is that you, God could have given the compensation without the suffering, right? So when no. we think about it, let's, let me just draw this analogy okay. out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's just imagine, let's give examples where compensation happens in the real world, yeah. right? So let's suppose um, a, a company pollutes the, the local river, yeah. people get sick, yeah. and so they sue the company, yeah. and the company gives them compensation, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so now it may be they've been compensated, Right. Yeah. The problem now, now the reason, but well, you could ask the question: well, Why didn't the company just give them the money anyway? Yeah. Right, without polluting the river. Yeah. Well, it's because the company has limited resources; they can't just hand out all their money to everyone that lives by their factories. Right, yeah. they have limited resources, so that's why they don't do that. Right, but God obviously doesn't have limited resources. No, no, you have to. God has run, unlimited resources. Run that back again. I didn't understand. That okay, okay, okay. So, so, no, no, no. He's, so, so uh, the, sorry, if we think about compensation, yeah. let me maybe I'll give you. Saying that, why example. doesn't God give the money without the suffering of the pollution of the water? Right, right. So let me. Maybe run a different example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's suppose I assault you. Yeah. Maybe I punch you. Yeah. Sexually assault you. Who knows, right? Hey, you can, hey, you hey, can hey, dream up whatever you want. <laughs> suppose I assault you in some way. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's just a tiny slap. Right? Sure, sure. You sue me, and I, and I say, okay, let we'll settle out of court. Yeah. How much money do you want to say you've been compensated? Hundred k. Hundred k. Okay. So yeah. let's suppose I give you hundred k. Mm -hmm. Right. So now your suffering has been compensated. Mm -hmm. Right. Now the problem is, you might say, but okay, if I two things. One, 
if I'm all good, I shouldn't have done the assault in the first place. Even if I did compensate you, I shouldn't have let the assault happen, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done it. The second problem is, mm. why couldn't I just give you the 100K without assaulting you? Now, the reason would be because I, maybe I have 100K, maybe I don't, mm. right? Mm. But I obviously don't have infinite amount of money to just give 100K to everyone here, right? So, so we can understand why humans don't compensate people continually because they have limited yeah. resources. Yeah. But God isn't like that. If God is real, yeah. he has unlimited resources. So the compensation yeah. could have come without the suffering. Therefore, the compensation does let, not let, explain let, the suffering. Let me further build your okay. argument okay. as well. Go this ahead. is the third thing that you forgot no, just to say. say. Oh, please. Just quickly. Please, no, no, no. Just one sentence. No, that's not nice. Just let, let just him say one sentence because you interrupted him. So just no, we, one sentence. We were here together. Oh, you're here together. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't Sorry, know. Through, okay. through suffering, God reveals himself to you. Okay, thank okay. you for that. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so what, what I want to say, the maybe third, we can talk later. Yeah. yeah. So the, okay. the third thing yeah. that would, to yeah, build up your okay. argument okay. would be, uh, also if you go to court, yeah. uh, compensation is not guaranteed. Correct. You yeah, have to sure. argue. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah? Okay, How yeah. many yeah. times do people go to court yeah. and they have a very good case to argue, but the, yeah. the guy has more money and a better uh, lawyer, and therefore wins the case, even that though that can happen, yeah. Right? But I, okay. no, no, we are talking here awesome. about a, a, a guaranteed way, a guaranteed way right. where there's no escape yeah. in injustices or okay. imbalance. Right. 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 I don't think that affects the point I make. No, 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 the, no. no it I does. See how it does. It does Maybe because what? It because what I'm trying to say to you is that the compensation or the thing that happens yeah. in hereafter yeah. is established for the very fact that all the sufferings that people yeah, or objects or things have gone through that they will not uh, be escaped for the very thing to happen because the very nature of the world is that not every justice can be compensated right so if the justice is not compensated then it seems to be no do you, you understand with me I, you okay, understand? So what, what, not every justice can be established. No, no, you, 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 okay, so again, you is, need the hereafter, yeah. the concept of the hereafter so of justice. On. For example, we, on the day of judgment, yeah. two, I think two rams will come. Yeah. One had a horn and the other one didn't. Okay. And the one had one advantage over it. The other one will be given the horn and the other one that had the horns will be taken away just so he can He'll get... Be given the horn. Exactly. Yeah, right. Just so why? Yeah. So there's justice, not in, not injustice to the least degree. Yeah. Nobody on that day would have any injustice. Yeah. Well, right, so, okay, but the point so, is, the point is, right? So what you're saying is so, that on the day of justice, there everyone is, will be compensated. Every, to yeah. the atom so the weight. problem is, the problem to, is, to, well, you've got, let's say you've got two animals, right? Yeah. Like, I've got two cats, yes. and I try and give them the best life yeah, I, I can give them, yeah. right? They have, I, I think, a comfortable life. Yeah. They, they don't suffer, they, they, they're, they're not being torn apart by predators, yeah. they're not dying stuck in a tar pit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, the question is then, why, if they can live like yeah. that, why couldn't no. other animals live like can, that? Can, can I just come right? back to... And, and if you say, well, there's compensation afterwards, why couldn't the compensation happen without the suffering? That hold I feel hold you on. haven't addressed. Let me address it, and okay, then you can ahead, come back, ahead, please. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Compensation, yeah. linguistically, what does that mean? You, you, are, you are given something to offset something else. Yeah. So, according to you, yeah. if compensation can happen before, then I would ask you, how can you compensate something when there is no injustice that happened in the first place? The in injustice has to happen first in order to be compensated. No, 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 but you're missing the point. I think Life, you're missing the point. No, no, the point I'm trying to make is that if you, if, okay. you live, if you... Yeah, live, if you use the word compensation, yeah, yeah obviously that's right. Yeah. Okay? But the point is, the, the, the compensation is represented by a, an actual experience or a real thing. So in this case, it's money, right? Yeah. Obviously, in heaven, and we don't expect it's going to be money, right? Yeah. But it's something that is a tangible benefit. So this tangible benefit, whatever it is, right, is given to you, right, after you've suffered. So if I slapped you and you sued me and I gave you 100 grand, you get the 100 grand and you had to experience the slap. Yeah, right? you had so to experience the slap. Right, right, but the point is, yeah. you didn't have to experience the slap. I could have given you the 100 grand without slapping. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 that's the point. No, what's he saying? So the compensate, yeah, the word no. compensation has to have something good, but no. the, the actual goods that are entailed yeah, what's do saying not is, require the slap. Why and say, that what, is the point. I understand. Why God is, could have given you those benefits Why are you saying, why don't you, get, you why don't you get paradise without suffering? Simple as, that's the argument. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. so again, look, what we say is very simple. 
the stuff that we live through in our life, it makes us who we are. Number one, we're not, this life is a test. We believe it's a test, okay? Mm -hmm. There's certain things that you need to understand. Because if you look at it from that plain view, of course yeah. it doesn't make sense. We believe... Even Thank if you. If, That's yes, great. Yeah. I'm yeah. really glad yeah, you yeah, yeah. want to really so, 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 so look at it from a plain view, it yes, doesn't make sense. Yes, if you look at it from that right. view where it's just materialism, right etc. It no, it doesn't because your, your, your studies and the stuff that you do is limited to your five senses and it doesn't go beyond that. And I understand where you're coming from. When you look at it from that point of view, I don't blame you for having these contentions. From the, the, the paradigm we're looking at, from it transcends all of that. So what we say is the sufferings that I've gone through, I've hated some of them. Like I went through one specific one about four and a half years ago. Really, really, <laughs> it worn me out greatly. But I look back, yes, I, I, I am. But the thing is, I wouldn't say be sorry because I'm happy that it happened. Because looking back now, I was like, I needed that. Because if I didn't do that, I was going to be destroyed. So I needed that. So what I'm saying is from the human, human, human perspective, for us, the sufferings that we go through makes us who we are. And oh, you see okay, this okay, okay. success story. So this is what's called the soul making theology. Yes, yes. So, so right. what I'm saying is, okay. call it whatever you like. The point is, it still stands. When it comes to animals, again, yeah. what I'm saying is, to me, like I said before, if God Almighty has created them in that way, to me, for example, if I'm going to go through a certain amount of suffering, and in the next life, I'm going to be given this whole, imagine this whole earth and everything in it for myself, arguments sake, yes, at least, yeah? Okay, okay. I would say that was damn worth it. You know what, actually send me back, let me do another 80, 90 years, because what you're giving me is far beyond what I deserve. Actually, you know what, I didn't deserve it at all. Hang on, hang on, hang on, let me just answer this point. It goes back to cosmology. Let me just answer this point. So the first yeah. theodicy you, you started, which yes. is technically in the literature, is called the soul-making theodicy. Yes. So this is the idea that you need suffering to develop character. 100%. Right? The problem here is that when you see an animal stuck in a tar pit, going to starve to death, yes. there's no character making opportunities for them. They're just suffering and they're going to die. No, there's and a reason. That. No, there's a there's reason no, it's that. What, there's what a very is, good... Let me, you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. That animal who's stuck in that pit, who is dying from starvation, makes a distinction between me and you. Because you look at that and deny God or say God exists but he's evil. So you still accept the God that exists but he's just evil. Yeah. Well, well I'm just saying that no, all, good, all powerful, all good God No problem. Exist. No so problem. It could be so therefore, that he's not all powerful therefore, or it could be that he's not all Therefore, forget, forget that child. I look at children who are babies who are starving to death. Put that animal to a side. So even but that... this is the, this no, is no, the no, argument. It's called no, the no, argument no, of no. animal suffering. No, no, no. But let me tell you, you can't just put it to no, the no, side. No, I am because I believe human suffering is greater than animal suffering. Yeah, human, we are intelligent beings. Okay. Well, animals are also intelligent. A baby... No, no, they can be not as intelligent as us. Right, but okay. okay. And but that are, makes, that's like saying, well, still, this guy's got a lower IQ no, than no, me, I'm therefore saying, I'm not going to care saying, about his suffering. I'm not saying that. What well, I'm then, saying well, is, as human being, a, a innocent baby who's been starved to death, okay, yeah. what I'm saying is, that still is there, because what did I say? We are here as a test. So you look at that and negate God. I look at that and I still believe in God. The difference between us is this. Yeah. We look at certain things, like for example, somebody came and said to me, I don't believe in God anymore. I said, why? He said, I go, I look at these pictures in Syria, how kids are being blown into pieces, etc. I said, you know what's very funny and ironic? You stopped believing in God because that child is getting bombs dropped on him. And that child is screaming, Allahu Akbar, as that bombs are being dropped on him. He is believing God is increasing. But what, but, and but what's that, it, what's it, what's it? It's Listen, relevant. It's very relevant. relevant. Very relevant. No, let me tell you something. Because right. you're saying, why is God allowing certain suffering to happen? In one scenario, when a child is being bombed, his faith in God is increasing, and somebody in the West sitting watching that saying, God cannot exist. For that child where the bombs are being dropped on him, his belief in God increases. But for the person who's living in the Western world in his comfort so far, when he looks at it, he's like, God could have not exist. If God exists, why would he allow that? Do you see when these things happen, there's wisdom behind it? Because what it does well. is, it puts us to a test. You say, I can't believe in a God like that. I say, God is all knowing and he knows best. Do you understand you the assume, purpose? If you assume, right, here's, here's why I think your argument is circular. If you assume, God is all knowing and knows best yes. and is all good. Yes. Then he must have a good reason. Yes. Right? And he does, which you don't know. Right, okay, but the problem is we we are trying to use reason and evidence yes. to try to determine is, whether the claims of religion are true capped. or false. You're capped through your five senses. Yeah, but so are you. No, I'm not. You're no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Whatever reason no, I'm you've not. got to believe in God I believe in the also hereafter. comes from your five senses. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I can, no, right, tell I, me what is your best for, favorite for, argument for this. Look, look, for, for example, Justin Barrow carried out you know, the study on Oxford University. He looked at young kids who have an inclination to... Sorry, so who, sorry? Justin Barrett. He done, a, he done a study in Oxford University. Yeah? yeah. He looked at young children who yeah. are being brought up and he realized that they have an innate inclination to 
turn to a higher power. Okay? okay. So they were born like that. They were not no Islam, no Christianity, no Hinduism. They innately had the belief in a higher power innately, not being told. So meaning, God well, Almighty, well, I don't just want to do with this It does, because you're talking about the five senses. I'm saying they have this innate disposition to turn to a higher but it power. Does, it doesn't intuition. follow they didn't get that from, from their senses. No, so, where did so, they get that from? So, uh, uh, well, I don't know, but exactly. I could come up with, a, I think, a reasonable hypothesis. No, right? how, how? The, you human, haven't even, being, you haven't human, even human beings, right, are very dependent on their parents. Right. I'm not talking about parents, I'm talking about from no, outside parents and influence. Human beings are instinctually dependent on their parents. No, of course. Because human beings cannot fend for themselves when they're born. Yes. Certain other animals can fend for themselves yes. at the moment they're born. Yes. Yeah. Right, but not humans. Yes. Right? So, so it makes sense for them to believe in no, a no, father no, no. figure. The study right? didn't say anything about No, 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 but parents. I'm trying to come up, I'm trying to say, well, you can't, you can't, you can't assume that that belief is independent it's of their it's, sensory it's, it's, experience. He said higher power, right? not, not parents, yeah, or no, no, a higher no, no, authority. But, but, but it's, what I'm saying is, you, you can't establish that that instinct is not derived from their sensory experience, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, no, it's, the, it's the point I'm trying to make is, whatever argument you have for God, right, whether it's the Kalam argument, or the design argument, or, you know, the text of the Quran, or whatever, or miracles, yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. right, they're all coming from your experience of the world. No, no, of course. You can't just be that. sitting in a vacuum. No, no, I know, I know. I'm not saying that. And then deduce that. God exists. I'm not saying that. I'm saying right? there are... You deduce God yes. exists from where you observe the world. Yes, right? no, no, of course. So we you use we're that both also. in the same boat. No, 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 but we, we transcend, we transcend beyond that. I know we do. I'm not saying we don't. But yeah. I'm saying our conclusions transcend that. Because what well, you've done is, you've got rid of the hereafter, you got rid of the test, no, you got no, rid no. of the wisdom. All you've done is, God is all good, evil exists, therefore God is evil or he doesn't exist. It's not, okay, but, but it's not as simple as that, right? It's not as simple yeah. as that, right? Because I, I, I said, even if I accept Definitely the existence yeah. of a hereafter, and I never heard the, an argument, answer. Okay, which yeah. the answer was, I mean, yeah. I thought I explained myself yeah. as well yeah. as I could, right? So. Um, even if there's a compensation in the afterlife, yeah. the problem is because the compensation could have happened without the suffering, it doesn't explain the suffering. But right? you know, that's the problem where I say there's a difference in cosmology. When I'm asking you the yeah. definition of that, how would you define that? Because you say all good, um, God is all good and God is all omnipresent or whatever, yeah, right? Uh, uh, well, he has the omnipotence, yeah. omniscience. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah. so what's the, 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 the opposite of all good? All bad. <laughs> okay. So you're implying here that yeah. that yeah. has inherently something negatively attached to it. It's actually suffering that I'm, I'm specifically yeah, saying. Yeah, but we're talking about that. So thing, if, yeah, if yeah. Yeah, suffering yeah. leads to but, death. Well, true, true, yeah. true, true. So, but not in all cases. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah. But but obviously, we all die. Sure, right? yeah. sure. Yes. But that's where the difference is between me and you. I yeah. don't believe that because in the Quran, that's a verse what Allah says, and we have created death to do what? To test. test which one of you no, no, guys no, no, but the point the point i'm not i'm not saying like i i i'm going to grant you that there's an afterlife right okay. just hypothetically obviously obviously i don't really yeah, yeah. but hypothetically even if there were an afterlife it doesn't it, it doesn't explain or justify the suffering so for example right yes of course let, 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 let's just how say for I, example how else, how else how else are st test established how do you test someone when someone goes to the marines and wants to become a marine mm -hmm. which is a very tenuous and very difficult thing to do yeah. there are certain uh, how do you right, design, they don't want how to do you, be a marine how, how do you know, shouldn't have to how do you know yeah, if you want to be a marine you're going to have to go through no, a no, very how do you know what's beautiful training. if you haven't seen ugly no, no, right. yeah but the assumption exactly the assumption is that everyone wants to be a marine because death is everyone has to experience that. No, but, well, but no, but that doesn't mean they want to. No, no, but no, no it doesn't matter. It's just not without a choice. That. Right, agreed, agreed. Right? We all die. So right, that's what right, I'm right. trying to say. So yeah. what I'm saying is there's a difference in cosmology. Your understanding of that has negativity attached to it. And, and, but it, and, it, it and, isn't just the fact that people or animals or die. Or suffering. Yeah. Let's say it's, suffering. It's, yeah, Even it's suffering. the fact that they go through really awful suffering. Same. Same. That there, there appears to be unnecessary. Right? Not to so you, now you to can you, say, to you. yeah, of course to me, to but every, every appearance has to be to the perceiver, right? You can certainly say, oh, well, yeah, I'm mistaken. You, know you can certainly say I'm mistaken in my perception. Yeah, right? I was about to say That's that. really what your argument yeah. does, right? Yeah. But if I say, well, I can't then trust my perception. Let's suppose I have perception no, you of, can. of trust God, no, no, no. right? No, 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 trust. Perception of God. No, no, no. Suppose I have an instinct of God. No, no, no you can't trust your perception. Why couldn't I have the same doubt about that? No, no, trust your perception. Because maybe God is lying to you. No, 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 no. God is not lying to you? Can't, we he might have a like reason that. to lie to you. No, right? he don't, we don't believe God can he, lie. He can, well, yeah, but that's a circular. No, no, instead of trusting your perception, right. what we 
says you can trust that as well. Yeah. Our trust of God is greater yeah. than our perception. Because yeah. God transcends my perception. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that is all it. But your belief in and, God sorry, has sorry, to come through your perception. perception. No, let me tell you something. Right? Let's put God out. Let's, let's, you, let's put God out of the picture for a second. Well, Where would you equate all this evilness from? Evolution. Well, from the nature of the world. You won't even call. You know what? You won't even call it evil. You know what you see? It's just this. The well, difference. Well, I mean, the, certainly, it, no, it just is. You can't see anything else. You, you, you can't even call it evil. A, a, a animal well, dying of starvation through this evolutionary process, process, you can't even call no, it I, evil. I can certainly say. Well, uh, you can't call it evil. No, you whatever, can't. You right? can't. There was no. You can't call it evil. I it says how it is. Where's the morality? Do you know what I'm trying to say? The, the difference between us and you is this: yeah. evolution, which you deem is doing the same thing. No, we it say, you're, you're missing the point. What I'm trying to show. No, no, right, no, let me make my closing statement. You make a closing statement. My closing statement is the following, yeah, because I need to go as well, yeah. By the way, thank you. I really enjoy the discussion. Yeah, always, always do, Ali. It's always fun. So, so closing statement is the following. Yeah. If we take God out of the picture, evolution is a blind process that is causing human, animal, and all kinds of suffering in the world. You can't even necessarily call it maybe evil. You can just say just, that's just the way it is. What we say as uh, religious people, as Muslims, we don't believe evolution is a um, random process. There's no randomness. We believe it is all calculated and it happens with the will of God. And we believe God Almighty is the most wise and everything that's happened we understand something, some things, we don't understand some things, and we have greater trust in God. That's how I wrap up. Okay, so my, my wrap up is that um, it's, the point is to point out an inconsistency in a set of beliefs. So the set of beliefs here is that God is all powerful and God is all good. So it doesn't matter whether I call suffering it? evil or not, that's irrelevant, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter whether evolution creates this evil world, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The point is, within the theistic belief system, there's an inconsistency. And the inconsistency is saying, look, God is behind all this evolution, which is what you said, and it involves all this suffering. But God, if he was all good, wouldn't do that, right? So therefore, we can conclude that either God is not all powerful, or uh, he is not all good, or he doesn't exist at all. But one of those three, it seems to me, has to be true. Thank you All right, again. thank you, Ali. It's always fun. Come see us more often. It's always fun. Well, when, you know, 